When you look at the performance over the last month, tech, the XLK outperformed by a two to one margin. So what's your take right now on how investors uh, might be leaning into tech and what you're seeing right now in terms of uh, value stocks maybe being overlooked? Yeah, I think, Zach, I think we've seen, you know, five to 10 years worth of growth in a, in a three month period as a result of the fact that, uh, that, that the coronavirus, uh, I would say, is the primary culprit of that. Um, but, you know, the way I look at it and the way I talk to my clients is that, you know, the old adage is you buy low, you sell high. And I have to say, looking at growth right now, it's 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 looking pretty high. Uh, you know, forward PE on on growth right now is probably somewhere in the ballpark of like thirty to thirty one times forward earnings. Um, whereas you look at things that are like more value based, they're trading closer to eighteen times earnings. Um, the way that I look at it is that you know value, for example, uh, right now is trading at a very low price, and not to mention you're getting great dividends. So in my mind, it's like you're getting you're getting really good prices. Um, you're getting income, whereas growth doesn't really pay out much in the way of dividends. And, and, and from my standpoint, it's a great buy. Not to mention that over time, value actually tends to beat growth 67% of the time. You know, on average, I would say it's probably somewhere in the ballpark of four and a half times a year over what growth typically does. When we talk about some of these names, though, too, that have been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, I mean, you can look at a few of those uh, carnival and Norwegian cruise lines, when we think about uh, what's going on there, obviously there's some risk attached to those names, but I, I'd be curious to get your take on why we haven't seen, as cases have improved, why we haven't seen some of these value names catch a boost here. Do you think maybe investors are just bracing for what could come when we hit the fall and winter and maybe that second wave that's pretty much, uh, it's been talked about by Dr. Fauci, a lot of experts out there fearing that. Do you think that's playing into some of the, the reasons why we haven't seen that rotation happen? Yeah, I mean, if you're talking specifically like about the travel industry, the cruise industry, I mean, I, I I can speak for myself. I'm not really super excited to go on vacation somewhere, especially on a cruise ship, you know, which historically are known to uh, to, to to be a cause of spread of disease. Um, so I guess that, that that might be part of the reason why that industry hasn't recovered. I think it might take a lot longer for us to see those industries really turn around as a result of that. Yeah, what are some of those value names then that you are watching that you do see value in here, whether or not maybe that second spike comes because we have seen a few opportunities outside the travel industry. Financials maybe one that has not seen a very strong recovery here uh, over the last few weeks. W where are you looking specifically? Um, you know, I, I've, I've never been one to pick individual stocks. You know, I, I like I like more broad based indexes, um, you know, like a like a Vanguard broad based index. You know, you're getting uh, a broad bed, a broad, a broad basket of great companies. Um, but to your point, like financials have really been taking a hit here. And I think, you know, even if we see like a little bit of a spike in rates, we could see those companies really start to recover. When you think about catalysts here over the next couple months, I mean, absent Republicans and Democrats agreeing to that fourth uh, stimulus phase here. Uh, what are you really looking at? Because we've gotten uh, pretty much the most accommodative Fed you can you can ever hope for if you are an investor out there. So what more has uh, any hope to push the market even higher from here? Well, I think one thing is, um, you know, the market, I think, is smarter than us. The market's always forward looking. And if you look at it right now, there's more cash on the sidelines than there's ever been in history. And this even goes back to like 2009 after the financial crisis. So I think at some point people are going to get really smart and say, OK, you know, I'm getting less than one percent on my return in cash. I really need to get some return out the market. And you're not going to get that in bonds. You're going to get that in the stock market because you're going to get growth. And then you're also going to get potential dividends. I know when we're talking about all this, too, it, it's strange to consider the fact that we're about uh, to move forward here into September. We have an election looming. Uh, I mean, on that front, a lot has been made about uh, the fact that the market does not enjoy close elections. Uh, the gap between Joe Biden and President Trump continues to narrow. President Trump gaining ground uh, on that front. What do you think that adds in terms of the back half uncertainty and what could happen whether or not uh, Joe Biden defeats President Trump, uh, how does that factor into your investing thesis in the back half of the year? Well, you know, I think if you look at things more on a long term basis, um, you know, politics in general has very little long term bearing on financial markets. And, you know, typically after election, markets tend to fare well. Um, I think, you know, maybe the biggest changes we'll see is if, if the Democrats get in will be some changes to the tax code. But I think um, as, as the past few elections have shown, I think, I think the market probably will continue to, uh, to continue on its path. All right, then let's talk uh, lastly about the real impact here of what a lot of people, I mean, whether you're Republican or Democrat, have been hoping for in terms of that next round 
uh, of stimulus. We haven't seen those checks, even though that is something that they both agreed to. We haven't seen those $1,200 checks cut once again. We will be discussing later on in the show about states taking up uh, the, the President Trump executive order here to, to start rolling out $300 to $400 in weekly benefits, though notably a, a little bit less than the $600 a week that we had seen before. Do you see that as something that, that the market may have already priced in here and getting some sort of a, a skinny bundle deal between Republicans and Democrats? And, and what might you see uh, coming out of that and, and changing the way that we've seen the market trade here at all time highs? That's a good question, Zach. I mean, I think I think the the, the benefit of potentially having another stimulus has, has hit the market. But I think that once that stimulus actually gets announced and we start to see that to happen, I think that's going to have a much greater impact and much more positive influence on the markets as we see in the future. 